Dennis is six years old. In June 2009, at five to nine in the morning, he was admitted to the emergency unit of Berlin's Charité Hospital with stomach cramps and bloody diarrhea. Doctors suspected a relatively rare but extremely serious infection that can lead to complete kidney failure. Professor Dr. Gerhard Gedeker, at that time head of the Department of General Pediatrics, and Dr. Andreas Weimann, consultant at the Institute of Laboratory Medicine and Pathobiochemistry of the Charité, impressively described how harmoniously a clinic and a laboratory can work together. During the physical examination, initially slight dehydration was detected. That is unusual at this age. The question as to whether Dennis had recently eaten or drunk anything particular was denied by the mother. But she did say, perhaps I should mention again, that we came back from a holiday at the weekend. We had stayed on a farm in the Allgäu. And to the question, had Dennis drunk raw milk there? She said indignantly, well, of course, naturally and directly from the cow. That's so healthy. Of course, this aroused immediately suspicion that it could be possibly a so-called EHEC infection, thus an enterohemorrhagic infection with Escherichia coli. Dennis did indeed belong to a high-risk group for this relatively rare infection, which can have such devastating effects and can even lead to total kidney failure because of what is termed hemolytic uremic syndrome. In this situation, an early diagnosis and minimum delay in commencing therapy are a matter of life and death. The results from the laboratory confirmed this suspicion. Well, the patient sample is put into the analyzer. We can see after a few minutes, or rather after the first measurement already, what is actually happening. It is a very urgent emergency. And we can see the following facts here. The hemoglobin level is only half of what is allowed by the police. This means this person is very badly anemic, that's obvious. Platelet counts prove thrombocytopenia, a condition which alone wouldn't shock us, since up to 30% of all hospital patients are thrombocytopenic compared to the measurements in private laboratories serving GPs, where most blood samples stem from healthy individuals. The question is what is the cause of the thrombopenia, and the answer relies basically on the IPF, which has for years blossomed into one of the most useful markers to clarify the underlying causes of thrombopenia. The elevated IPF level shows clearly that the bone marrow of the patient is still functioning, and now we have to compile all the data for a comprehensive report. The data from the numerical analysis, the scatter plots, histograms and the digital morphology information, at least in this case also the overview image of the DM96, which shows particularly the red cells, will be depicted in the expert viewer. All the data are comprehensively compiled and then of course it means to act quickly. It is already 10.50, half an hour has passed since the sample arrived. I think where the real advantage lies is that we have access to the expert viewer on the computer, and not just in my office, but on every computer on every ward. Thus I can view all the data immediately after their transmission to the expert viewer. Every physician on a ward can view them right after the measurements have been performed. Above all, one can then simply pick up the phone and discuss the data together. I find this to be a huge advantage. And it certainly helps considerably in the process of the diagnostic procedure. In this way, an EHEC infection could be diagnosed after about two hours. Thanks to this quick reaction, Dennis could be treated in time on the intensive care unit. After just three weeks, he was allowed to return home. A speedy diagnosis is of great importance for the prognosis. Prerequisite for this are standardized processes in the laboratory as well as clear communication with the clinic. The parameters of the immature platelets play a significant role in quickly detecting the functioning marrow activity. Combined with the reticulocyte and fragmented red cell counts, the differential diagnosis can, in this way, swiftly lead to the suspicion of a microangiopathic hemolytic disease. This approach has already been successfully incorporated into the XE5000 case manager. The case manager does not look at individual parameter results in an isolated fashion. Using a diagnostic rule set, it instead evaluates them in connection with other hematological parameters. Should patterns matching those known to be specific for a particular disease entity be identified, then exemplary sample cases are displayed. 
offering assistance in the diagnostic process. The case manager is not a program designed to independently generate a diagnosis, rather it serves to facilitate and speed up the diagnostic process. In this way, the laboratory can support the diagnostic process quickly, efficiently and at no extra cost, leading in turn to a reduction in the flood of data the clinicians have to cope with.